I'm going to speak to you today about two cocktails. One is the cocktail of death and the other is the cocktail of life. The cocktail of death and the cocktail of life. And why is this important for you? Because you are in search of life, you are in search of happiness. But many who are in search of happiness in this world have been finding the death. Instead of finding life, they are finding death. Spiritual death, they walk like living dead. So it's important for you to know what is causing death in your life and what you have to do to have life. So let's start with the cocktail of death, the spiritual death, the one that brings death onto you. It has three ingredients. The first one is pride. The proud person naturally they resist everything that comes from outside because they think they are the best, the best one, the top of the food chain. They resist everything that comes from outside because what comes from outside is not enough for them. They know better, they can do more, they know more, they always have more. So the pride closes the person up for anything good that can be added onto their lives because they're already good enough. So pride steals life from the person and brings to them death because it deceives the person, because it makes them to believe on something that is not true. And in reality, we're not all of that that we believe that we are. The person that is most gifted on talents, intelligence, capacity, this or that, the human being maybe gathers the most and the best qualities, still they are human beings subject to things such as a disease, a virus, isn't that true? An accident? Human life is fragile. And it's very important for us to take a dose of humbleness. Pride kills. Yes, it kills. The person in life. It kills the person while they're still breathing. They are walking, but they are already dead because of their own pride and arrogance. This is the first ingredient. The second ingredient is the vanity. Very associated with the first. Vanity is when the person attributes value to something that has no value. Something that only has value in their head because it makes no sense, no practical sense, because vanity in here, I speak in the sense of futile things and useless things. It raises the bar of their status in society. It gives them a sense of importance a sense of being trending, of accepted by others. They feel like they're handsome, beautiful in regards to other people. So they give more importance to that what is not really important. Please, I'm not talking here about a natural care that all of us we must have with our health and appearance. All this is natural. I'm talking about that what goes beyond the natural, the person that is vain, they want their name somewhere, they want their name to be respected, followed, praised by people, they want the recognition, they search some type of glory to themselves, all in vain. Vanity can lead people to death, as we saw recently. Actually, we have been seeing not one, but many cases of people who are in search of likes. In social media, they find a dangerous, exotic place to take a selfie, a picture. The name of the picture is very subjective. Selfie that comes from themselves, the word self, they climb a mountain, they go by the edge of a building and suddenly they slip up and they fall. Vanity literally has been taking many people to death. 
This is the second ingredient. And the third ingredient that completes the cocktail of pride and vanity, the third one comes to seal up, to give that touch of death, which is called selfishness. Selfishness. When the person only think on themselves, they only think on themselves. What they will gain to themselves, what is the benefit that they will have to themselves. Other people are not added to their maths, to their plans. If they are included, they are just stones, like steps for them to climb higher on the expense of these people. Selfishness, only to think on themselves, also brings death, because selfishness will lead you to be alone. You can even have a lot of success, but when you look around, you have nobody to celebrate it with you. And if there will be someone, there will be only people who are like minions of yourself. They are there just to take something out of you. As long as you have money to give them, people will be there like those pigeons in the public squares in search of crumbs that are being thrown at them. As long as there are crumbs, the pigeons will be there. But when the crumbs end, they'll fly elsewhere. That's how your social life will be. Pride, vanity and selfishness. This is the cocktail of death. What is the cocktail of life? The cocktail of life, you can check that the cocktail of death, all the three ingredients, they are centered on the self. Pride, vanity and selfishness is all centered on the self, on the person themselves. They are the center of their own lives. The cocktail of life is the opposite of that, because the secret of life is not to make you the center of yourself. Please, take note. This will be the topic of the test. The secret of life and happiness is for you to not center your efforts, attention on you, but to center your attention on God and on your neighbor. This is the secret of life, which Jesus spoke about it when somebody asked him, Lord, what is the commandment that is the most important in the law? What is the most important in the scriptures that I have to keep it? And Jesus said, look, there are two main commandments. One, to love God above all, above everything. You have to love God more than you love yourself, your father, your mother, money. You have to love God above all, with all your heart, soul, understanding, with all your strength. This is the first great commandment, which means your focus is in God to remind you that you are not God, that there's someone greater than you, that you answer to someone, that there is a creator. This is the first great commandment. And the second, similar to the first, you will love your neighbor as yourself. You love your neighbor. You serve your neighbor. You try to make your neighbor the object of your life. You want to give your life, you want to spend your life for the well-being of your neighbor. So when you mix these two ingredients, the cocktail of life has only two ingredients, to focus on God and on your neighbor, the consequence of that, the natural one, is that you will have life, you will be happy. Because you're going to be well with your God, your Creator. You're going to be well. You're going to know that you have a celestial Father. You're no longer going to be afraid of death. Death does not scare you anymore. When you die, you're going to be finally with your Father. You're going to be so loved. Because who is really loved? You don't love that person that is showing them off on social media, proud and shining with stars and that filter showing off wealth, you don't love that person. No. You can admire the beauty of what they are wearing, the place, but you don't love them. Who usually we love? Usually we love those who live to serve, those who want the best of others, 
those who are using their lives in a useful way. Isn't that true? We love these people. So love only comes to us when we give ourselves. It's then when you find happiness. This is the secret of happiness. This is the cocktail of life. So if you want life, leave your pride aside, vanity aside, selfishness aside, and start to focus on God and to focus on how can you serve your neighbor. Drink of the cocktail of life. Not only in this life, but a cocktail that will give you eternal life. Did you like this? Would you like to hear it again? Listen to it as many times as you need until this content becomes part of you. Don't forget to leave your like, comment and share. See you next time.